Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. How are you doing? I'm doing very, very well. Not only is this a video on my favorite champion in the game, Sill of the Drakes, S.O.D., the main woman herself, one of the best things that ever happened to Raid Shadow Legends, her being a daily login reward, but also I'm just feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good in life. I hope you guys are too. For me, I was, you know, during COVID and stuff like that, isolation, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I was like super, super, super depressed. But you know, it was tough. It was tough, I think, for everybody in a lot of ways. But for me, you know, I try to I, I really got my life back on track. And and how I did it, not that I'm some soothsayer, I'm not, you know, a philosopher or anything like that, but or not a self-improvement guru. I'm no Tony Robbins. However, what I did was just make a bunch of small changes, and I started about, you know, three or four months ago, right? So I added something. It sounds really dumb, but I started like flossing twice a day. Brush. <laughs> started flossing twice a day. I started forcing my st myself to, to, to consume some gross edible green thing, athletic greens every day. Just try to get my diet back on track. One time I nibbled on a piece of cheese and my cholesterol went up to 900. And then I started adding meditation through Headspace app every day. And then next thing you know, I'm doing, you know, cardio every day after the gym. And, and slowly but surely, I think that's the key to life, at least for me. You know, I'm not going to pretend to know the answers for you guys. But for me, it was just trying to do little things every single day and then every week I would add a new little thing to my daily schedule and now here I am feeling pretty good honestly guys so anyway uh no easy segue from that to this but still the drinks she's amazing I love Syl. Here she is right now. She's a Barbarian Magic Affinity Daily Login Reward Champion. She's one of the coolest looking champions in the game as well. And actually, before we get into, you know, what we're doing, what, what kind of led on to today's video, I saw in Doom Tower, I always, I don't know about you guys, but I always, even if I don't always have the, all the champions, I'm always looking at the best teams in the world, right? So if we look at the global ranking here, I saw this dude, right? This dude right here. So Kataya, Kataya? Kataya, he beat it in 45 turns with only using SOD and only using Drexar Blood Twin. And I'm like, dude, I think to myself, and obviously a lot of people use SOD uh, on Nether Spider and all the Doom Tower bosses. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, how is he building her and him to where he's able to do that in 45 turns on floor 90 of Nether Spider in Doom Tower hard? It's not that, e not, not that difficult to kind of guess what he might be doing. The first thing I recognize is speed, right? Adding as much speed as you can, giving your artifacts, giving your gear to Sil the Drakes is going to be incredibly important, right? So that's the first thing I knew I needed. The second thing is I knew I needed to keep her alive so she can revive Drexar if I was going to make a comp like this. So I need to put her in regeneration uh, gear, which I think regeneration is probably the most underrated gear set right now, artifact set in the game. It's amazing on your reviver, on your healer to make sure they stay alive. Uh, and that is definitely the case here. So I thought to myself, okay, let's rebuild Silva Drakes in regeneration with as much speed as possible and see if we can do this. And guess what? We did, we did. It took me a while. <laughs> it took me longer than I'm comfortable admitting, but then I found that adding Doom Priests made it much more consistent. So going with Silva Drakes and going with Drexstar on the same team, it took me, I tried 20 times. I succeeded one. That's a 5% success rate. I don't know about that guy. And the best teams in the world, how many turns it, it took on him. But hey, where'd my, where'd my Drexstar go? Did I click off Drexstar? There we go. Uh, so for me, I can't live with a 5% success rate, right? And it ended up being less turns, or more turns, excuse me, than just adding Doom Priest to the equation. And this team was about a 50% success rate. So obviously I could add more support champions and make it a higher success rate, more cleansers, specifically for Nether Spider. But I'm not just talking about Nether Spider here. I'm talking about now I can use Silva Drakes against pretty much any Doom Tower boss I want to, right? I can use her against, I don't have the team up, but I will show you a team against the Magma Dragon. I will show you a team here against the Frost Spider. This is a pretty fun team as well. We have Geomancer on the team. I just did a guide on him a few days ago. So I'm gonna show you all this, but first let's go ahead and take a look at Syl and see like the changes that we made, where she was and where we took her. So check it out, guys. This is a video that I put out about actually almost a year ago now, 11 months ago. 
And this is the first build, the build that I used on Silver Drakes for a long time. You can see Stun. If you see the main stats here, I built her pretty slow, decent amount of defense. Her accuracy was actually a bit low here at 215, I want to say. Actually, let me press play here. Okay, yeah, it was only 215, so low on the accuracy as well. And I had Fearsome Presence Mastery on her. Let me see if I can show you the masteries. It doesn't really matter. You, oh, here it is right here. So I went down Defense, down Support, and I went down to Fearsome Presence. Now, this build is okay if you want to guarantee stuns basically a double time hit and we have fearsome presence on there and we had stun artifacts on her as well however when you start getting to the mid to the end game basically once you're starting to work on and then kind of make your doom tower boss teams more efficient i thought to myself what can i do to change everything up here and this was the result of that now, the first thing you'll notice is, well, if we go to our kit here, just quickly looking, we have a placing decreased speed on the A1. We have decreased turn meter as well on the A1. On the A2, we have placing stun, and then we have a revival and an ally protect. So the first thing I recognize is that we don't need to have crit rate on her. I mean, it's it's great. She puts out a decent amount of damage. Don't get me wrong. If you're building her to be like a quasi damage dealer on your team and to, you know, to get all the enemies stunned every time for, you know, early game progression or maybe mid game progression, there's nothing wrong with running that stun set and just optimizing the stun and her damage. However, in the end game, I kind of re started to rethink everything, right? Because there's, there's so many ways to build every champion in this game, isn't there? So for me, I'm like, okay, I don't need her to do it ton of damage especially if my burners my hp burners are going to be doing all the damage that i really need uh on doom tower bosses right for most of the bosses i uh, still the drakes is not going to be my damage deal she's going to be a debuffer to help me get through the waves with cc with stun and then uh decrease speed under a1 and that's pretty much in revival and most importantly, the passives. Heals all allies by 10% of their max HP at the start of each turn. Also plays an increased speed on a random ally for two turns. Uh, which is great too, because if she only has one or two random allies, you know where that increased speed is going to go. And the increased speed lasts for two turns, whereas, you know, obviously she's going very fast. She's lapping the other, uh, you know, allies on her team as well. So she's an amazing healer. Someone in the comments yesterday or two days ago actually asked to see her in a curing set. I think it's a very interesting idea. Her, maybe Doom Priest, maybe uh, Sky Touch Shaman. See how good, how much more healing they can do in in in, uh, in in curing. Curing is a set I don't think I've ever even equipped a full curing set on any champion. So that'd be fun. I also changed up her masteries. Right, I'm a little bit less concerned with getting all those stuns down. Again, more of an end game build. I can keep my team alive, especially in a regen set with stun anyway in her kid and in life steal gear on Drexstar Blood Twin. I'll show you his build in a moment as well. Uh, so I thought to myself, you know what? Let's go instead for timely intervention. I don't need uh, even the offense uh, on her because I'm not worried about getting damage from her in this build. She's going to be my beast, god tier, support champion, healer, reviver, right? So increases champion's turn meter by 20% whenever an ally uh, HP drops below 25%. This is great for Nether Spider for all the Doom Tower bosses because oftentimes this is happening. This is happening a lot of times during the same battle, right? Because Drekstar, he dies probably six times on this run. So every single one of those times, I'm guaranteed to get a 20% turn meter boost and then it will lead to her reviving them faster and healing them and, and so on and so forth. So I really like going with timely intervention instead and and we still have the counterattack retribution and damage mitigation uh in uh well not cycle revenge but damage in blast proof i love blast proof mastery decreased damage from aoe attacks by five percent and rejuvenation increases the amount of healing in the value of shield buffs the champion receives by five percent she's healing herself off of the regen set anyway and she has uh, of course the passive on allies so the passive on allies i can get with i can boost up excuse me with the merciful aid increase the amount of healing in the value of shield buffs on champions with stun, sleep, fear, true fear, and freeze. That will come into play, obviously, against the frost spider. And then we have healing savior. Increased amount of healing in the shield buffs. Placed by the champion at 10% if the ally has 40% HP or less. So all of these healing masteries, I really wanted to keep in there. And I wanted to keep rapid response, too. 30% chance of increasing the term meter by 10% when a buff cast by this champion is removed or expired. Not only does she have, of course, her, uh, 
her increased speed off of the passive, but she also has the ally protect every time she revives an ally, which again is pretty frequently because they're dying quite a bit. So anyway, this is the new build guys. Now listen, the one thing I'll point out is, is I built her really fast. Doesn't have to be this fast, especially if you're not going after the highest Doom Tower hard difficulty level boss, but I want to just throw my best speed gear that I could possibly can. So I looked for regen gear and I took some from other champions. I didn't even glyph her out. So no glyphs on any of this speed, but I was able to build her to 270 speed. So again, I got a trip roll here on this regen, took it from somebody else, put it on her, a double roll here, not glyphed up, uh, out, <clears throat> excuse me, on the shield. I get a little, get a little choked up when I'm talking about Sil. Uh, <laughs> so speed, HP on the, and again, Adding more HP, adding more defense, that's cool with me because again, I'm not worried so much about crit rate as opposed to the old, old build where we had 100% crit rate on our sill. HP on the chest and speed, of course, on the boots. We went with accuracy on the banner. We went with crit damage with more accuracy on the subset and defense on the ring. So one thing if I had to critique this build as well is the accuracy is still too low for Doom Tower Heart. 251, I mean, if we're going against a weak affinity, which we are in, in, in a lot of cases here, especially the Nether Spider, uh, that still will land the decreased speed more often than not at 250, but we really are aiming for 300 or 350 uh, ideally to land that decreased speed consistently the stuns on the waves usually will still land at 250 so just keep that in mind guys again we work with the gear that we have I want to make her really really fast so she could revive and heal more often because every turn that she has not only is she healing herself by 15% HP and that's why I loaded extra HP on the gauntlets and everything like that bigger heals more HP overall uh, and she's also healing 10% uh, of max HP at the start of each turn on all allies so the faster she goes the more heals that she can put off not to mention the revivals everything else so anyway let's go ahead and try her out against all of these doom tower bosses guys i'm gonna go ahead and show you uh the three-man team the three-man team here as i said 50 percent success rate i ran it well i ran it a lot i ran it probably 15 20 times over the last couple days and uh yeah I, I what i did was i stopped right before the end that way i could i don't know if you guys ever do this this is like a real nerd style right but i don't want to use my key i just want to see if i'll be successful to test out the teams so i stopped these right before the run is about to end win or lose that way i can keep testing and keep going so i don't run out of uh keys which i just noticed i'm out of well, I guess I'll continue this video in a few hours. Actually, I can do my quest. I'll be right back. I'll get more keys. All right, guys, we're back. All I had to do was fight the clan boss with a rare champion to get five more keys to give you guys a demonstration of Sil the Drake. So here we go. Let's go ahead and jump in here. Thank God we had that advanced quest. Otherwise, that would have really screwed up my day. You guys can see already, you know, two stuns on the first kind of wave here. The reason I'm showing you the waves on this first fight is just to kind of see her stun rate. Uh, obviously, again, it's placing that. So it's not predicated on her landing critical hits in order to place that stun and the decreased turn meter from her A1. So that's nice to have again she places one stun there out of three mobs so we're looking at around well very uh anecdotally around a 30 percent chance or so let's go ahead and give her one more shot here and see what she can do uh next turn we'll see how many she can get out of these five if there's still five but you can see these 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 mobs are pretty easy right we don't need her to be just god tier stunning everybody uh easy to keep this team alive and even if somebody was to die if i you know didn't have great gear or something uh three stuns there out of four it's still reliable enough where it's not necessary to have her in a stun set in my opinion you know unless you really really are struggling with progression again early mid game where you really make sure need to make sure that all those stuns land so so here we go. I'm going to show you how this team works when we get to the nether spider here. Well, we're already at the nether spider. Ash, come on, bruh. It's pretty <laughs> monotonous, but I want to show you how it works before we end it, and I'll take you to the end. And again, I told you this one is not 100% success rate. The good news is, is similar to the, uh, and, and Drekstar always dies in the very beginning. She'll always revive Drekstar. Always make sure you have them in the right order, so she's reviving who you want her to revive first. Drekstar takes priority over Doom Priest. Uh, and now, it's going to be pretty smooth sailing, right? 
Uh, she's fast enough to where she can revive both champions before Drekstar goes and dies again. And all the while, everybody is burning down. She will not use, I have no special uh, rules in place in terms of this team setup. I don't have any AI customization. She will not use her A2 into the counterattack anyway. She'll just use her A1 on the spider. We land that decreased speed. As I said, spirit affinity. So it's nice and consistent to always land that decreased speed, even with a 250 accuracy. And we're talking Doom Tower floor 90. So you guys can get how it works, right? Doom Priest is there to help kill, keep Sill of the Drakes alive because things will go wrong if Sill of the Drakes dies. Obviously, that's my reviver. I need her to stay alive. So Doom Priest helps her stay alive. And then Sill of the Drakes is there to revive and help uh, uh, Drekstar Blood Twin stay alive so we can kill the spiders. So what I'm going to do here, as you guys can see, we're making actually decent time. But look at that regen, man. Look at that regen gear. Every time she takes a turn, it's like a huge, massive self-heal there in order to stay alive because that is essential to keeping the rest of the team alive. So here we go, guys. I mean, at this point, what I'm going to do, I think, is just cut here, take you to the end because I, I think you get the point here, right? I think you get the point. I want to show you her against like two, three, even four Doom Tower bosses, whatever I can show you guys uh, in this video. But this one, actually, it looks like it's almost over. It's almost over. Take a turn. Thank you very much. And then again, you can see the HP burns are still there. So even though Drekstar is dead, it's not a big deal. They're still burning down. So I'll be right back at the end of this battle. Then we'll go on to the next one. All right, guys. So it looks like we did it on the first try and it was pretty easy. Five minutes, but you know, 81 turns. Best is 80 right in line. And of course, uh, 10 million in 1 million on the healing. 1.2 million in the heals. Yeah. Plus about what? Did I say seven revivals? I meant like 17. It feels like that at least. Anyway, uh, easy peasy uh, with this new kind of support build. Let's go ahead and show you some of the other bosses, starting with the Frost Spike. She's gonna run heals on this team. I'm gonna come back to you guys when I'm actually at the Frost Spider. All right, guys, so this team takes a little bit longer, but it's a really, really fun team. The synergy between Geomancer and Drekstar in terms of the HP burn, probably unnecessary, honestly, to have both of them on the team, but really Dark Elhane and Sil the Drakes are really, really fun to put together as well. Look at Dark Elhane on this team. She's not going to do a ton of overall damage, but because of all the freezes, she is triggering that A2 Death's Majesty all the time. So check this out. Boom. She's just going to keep going and going and going every time somebody is frozen on this team. Really, really fun to watch there. And of course, Geomancer will be doing the uh, largest amount of damage overall. Again, you guys can go ahead and check out the guide that I did on him. Really fun champion. But again, everybody's frozen. Dark Al Ain. Boom, 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 boom. She puts all those buffs on herself. Really, really fun to have. And again, Doom Priest and Silda Drakes are going to be there to make sure everybody stays alive and make sure everybody stays healed. So you can see, again, longer, but this is a team that you guys can be shooting for. Of course, you know, two of these are daily login reward champions. One in Drekstar Blood Twin is available just for, through fragments inside the bazaar. And of course, uh, Geomancer is really unnecessary, but fun to use on this team nonetheless. So I won't make you sit here for another three or four minutes and watch the remainder of this battle. But again, a fun team to use. Let's go ahead and go over to, I don't know, the Magma Dragon. Uh, let's see who I have available and I'll be right back. So like I told you guys, we have Drekstar with 6 million, Geomancer with 8.5, Doom Priest 1.7, Silda Drake's not putting out a lot of damage, but certainly adding a lot of heals. Almost 3 million now with this build in the overall heals. Pretty insane Dark Elhane, 4 million overall damage. But again here, just illustrating her as an overall support utility champion on that particular team. Same thing here, I'll show you, let me just put together a Magma Dragon team. Actually, let me see if I have a Scarab King team uh, ready to rock here with Silver Drake. Let me make one, I'll be right back. You know what guys, let's have some fun actually instead and put Urholz, the Soul Cage, and Silver the Drakes on the same team because of Urho's passive. I only have him at 95 or 100 speed. It's going to be super easy. Let's go ahead and see what this tandem can do. What a way to close out the video. I'll be right back once we actually get to the Scarab King. All right, guys. So here we go. We're going to see Sil of the Drakes and Urho's the Soul Cage go ahead and duo the Scarab King. She's going really fast, able to keep herself healed. I think that truthfully, we could probably just solo the Urho's, but it's fun to have Sil the Drakes and see her outpace the Scarab King and keep herself alive as 
well as make sure that we have a topped off Urhosa Soul Cage, so this fight is never in jeopardy. Just killing the Scarab King without any reduction of enemy max HP, rather just all that poison damage every single time that he hits Urhost. Uh, let's go ahead and cut to the end here, because you guys kind of get the point, but it's fun to watch nonetheless. It's fun to see those uh, poisons add up and slowly bleed out on the Scarab King. I will be right back. So here we have it, guys. To end the video, we have Silda Drace putting out 3.3 million in heals, 830 in heals off Urost in a regen set himself. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're able to look at Silda Drakes, my favorite champion in the game, and able to take away something that, you know, at the very least, make you think about how I can build these champions, other ways, different ways to build these champions as you progress in the game, as your needs change inside the game. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you want to see kind of a rebuild on any other champion here in the near future. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.